In section 7.1, we're going to look at roots and radicals. Roots are the inverse of raising something to a power. So first we're going to look at square roots. Square roots are the inverse of raising something to the second power. So we'll want to know what goes times itself two times to give us that piece. So this is our square root symbol. It is also called a radical sign. When you just see this square root symbol, this wants the positive square root or the principal square root. Uh, let's think for just a second. If we are looking at the square root of 25, all right, and this is asking us what goes times itself twice to give 25. Well, 5 squared gives 25. And negative 5 squared gives 25. Both of these will give 25. When we use the square root symbol, we want the positive square root. So we want the 5. If we wanted the negative square root, we would put a negative on the outside of the radical symbol. This one would want the negative square root. Let's look at some simple square roots. So for our first one, square root of 36, what goes times itself to give 36? We want the positive square root, so it will be 6. Square root of 100 will be 10. This one is a fraction, and we'll learn some rules for those later, but your numerator and denominator are both perfect squares. So if we just take the square roots there, two-thirds, because two-thirds times two-thirds gives four-ninths. Let's look at a few more radicals and think about them. Um, our first one, square root of point thirty-six. Now, just plain old 36 would be 6, but point thirty-six that means we need a decimal in there. Um, if we try point six, we could do point six times point six, we give us 36, and remember, you would go in two decimal places. So that is going to be the correct answer. For the next one, square root of a negative 49. What number can you multiply times itself to give you a negative 49? You can't, because to get a negative, you have to have an odd number of negative signs. If it's going times itself, you'll have two signs. So... This one is a non-real number, and later we will call those imaginary numbers, but for now just it's non-real. The next one, it is okay for the negative to be on the outside. Remember, that will tell us to choose the negative square root. So just plain old square root of 81 is a 9, but the negative outside tells us we want the negative square root. We can have other roots besides square roots. When we do have other roots, we will have a little number here, the little n, and that is called the index or the root. Um, if we don't see a number there, it is automatically a 2. So if we have just this, the index is 2. That one is the most common. And so it tells you it's a square root if there's no number there. If we have a number there, that's the index or root. It will tell you how many copies. For example, if we have the cube root of 8, right? a 3 here tells us we want 3 copies of something to give us the 8. This is reversing something to the third power. This matches the power that you're trying to reverse. There's something to the third power that equals 8. And that's what we're trying to find. And the answer on this one is 2 because 2 to the third is 8. We'll look at a few of those. Um, the piece underneath is called the radicand. So here the 8 is the radicand. The A is the radicand on those. Another example. 
the cube root of 27, so what goes times itself three times to give 27, is 3, because 3 to the third is 27. So you'll start to understand the relationship between the root and something to the power. They are inverses. I want to just make a chart real quick of some perfect cubes. And this is something you can always do on your scrap paper. It doesn't take very long, but we'll just go up through 5. And so we'll take each number times itself. So 1 times 1 is 1, times 1 again is still 1. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is 8, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So this last column is all perfect cubes. So we're all, all the way up to 125 and there's only 5 of them. But if we have one of these, if we're looking for a cube root, say for example, cube root of 64. If we have our little table and we thought about this, go backwards, the answer is 4. Because 4 to the third is 64. Let's try cube root of negative 27. Well, for the 27, it's going to be a 3. But it has to go times itself 3 times and give us a negative. Um, that is going to be okay with an odd power here because we could do negative 3 to the third and that means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 which gives you three negatives and that would give you a negative 27. So even though it wasn't okay with an even power because you could only have two signs, it is okay with an odd power to have a negative underneath. Our next example is just cube root of 8. If you have your chart, just go backwards. It is going to be 2 because 2 to the third is 8. So 2 is your answer. Our next example is a fourth root. So this just means you have something to the fourth power. The answer is 16. And we can extend our chart a little bit. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is still 1. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. This one 27 times 3 would be 81. And that's as far as I'm going to go in my head. Uh, fourth root of 16 is a 2. Our next example is a fifth root. Um, that means five copies of something. Um, these are going to learn to do on your calculator, but this fifth root is going to be three. If you plug in three to the fifth, it will give you 243. Or if you do times another three here, you would see it. So the answer is three, and it is because three to the fifth equals 243. Just want to re-emphasize here that you cannot take the even root of a negative. So you can't have a negative radicand if you have an even index. It will give you a non-real number. You can take the odd root of a negative radicand. So if we try to do cube root of negative 64, that one is okay to do. If we just do cube root of 64, if you refer back to your table, that's going to be a 4, but to get negative in there, we need to do negative 4, because negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 would give you negative 64. If we try fifth root, because that one's odd, of negative 32. All right, we didn't work these out, but the fifth root of 32, I just remember that one, and the answer is 2. But it's odd, so we're going to need a negative 2 to get back negative 32. So we would have negative 2 to the fifth. Five negatives would give us negative 32. We have a special definition for 
um, square roots of variables. Um, because we don't know, if we put an x in, we don't know if x is positive or negative. So the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. To avoid the use of absolutes, we can say variables are positive real numbers. And this is what you will see the majority of the time. Then you don't have to put absolutes. We're going to look at a few problems, and we will assume that variables are positive, so we don't have to worry about the absolutes. Right, our first one is the square root of 36x to the 4th. Right, for the 36, that's a perfect square. It is 6 times 6. So we have a 6 there. For the x to the 4th, uh, we'll look at this a couple ways. Right, we could write out what x to the 4th means. It's 4 copies of the x. When you're doing a square root, there's no index there, so it's a square root. That means groups of 2. There's one group of 2 and another group of 2. Every time, 1 goes outside the radical for the group. So you end up with 2 of them outside. So the square root of x to the 4th is going to be x squared. And there is no radical left. Um, x squared times x squared gives you x to the fourth. After you do several of these, you realize you can divide the index into the exponent underneath. So our index is 2 into 4 goes evenly 2 times. That's how many will come outside. All right, let's try the next one. Square root of 25. 25 is a perfect square. It is a 5. And this one is square root of x squared. Um, you want to know what goes times itself to give you x squared. Two times it would just be x. Or you can divide 2 into 2 goes one time. So it's just x to the first. The y is going to work the same. Square root of y squared would be just a y. Right? Our third one. Uh, square root of 81 would be a 9, right? Square root of a squared would be just an a. Now, these exponents are getting a little higher, so let's do the division. Uh, by our index of 2, 2 into 6 will go 3 times. So y to the 3rd times y to the 3rd would give us y to the 6th. So y to the 3rd. And for the z, 2 into 8 will go 4 times. The z to the 4th times z to the 4th would give us z to the 8th. A couple more examples here with other indices. Right, and we'll use the division because these are getting larger. So cube root of x cubed is going to be just x. Or you can do 3 into 3 to go 1 time. So x to the 1st. For y to the 6, 3 into 6 will go 2 times, so it will be a y squared. Fourth root. Uh, fourth root of 16, you can try it on your calculator, or if you continue to chart, it will be a 2. And for our variables, 4, it will go into 8 2 times, so that will be an x squared. 4 into 12 will go 3 times. And 4 into 4 will go 1 time, so this will be just a C. A few more problems. Um, we're going to do a cube root of negative 27. Remember, it is okay to do an odd root of a negative. So this will give us a negative 3. And for our variable, 3 into 30 will go 10 times. So x to the 10th. Uh, this one I would say do on your calculator, the fifth root of 3125, of negative 3125, so it's going to give you a negative, and it's going to be a 5. So you'll just punch that on your calculator. Make sure you learn how to do different roots on your calculator. Right, uh, cube root of 64. We did this one, I think, on the table. Uh, for 64, it is 5. 4. 4 to the 30 is 64. So that's a 4. Divide for your 
exponent and your index 3 into 15 will go 5. Another example, 5th root of 32. This one is one you're going to use a lot. It's going to be a 2. It's 2 to the 5th is 32. For your variables, just divide. 5 into 10 will go 2 times. And 5 into 15 will go 3 times. I'm going to go ahead and show you a, a rule that really is from a later section with these. But um, when you have a fraction under a radical, just take the radical with the numerator and the denominator. So we can make this square root of x squared and square root of 4 y to the sixth. I think that's easier than just trying to see in your head what's perfect power. Square root of x squared is just going to be x. You can divide 2 into 2. We'll go 1 time, so x to the first. Square root of 4. 4 is a perfect square. It is a 2. And 2 into 6 will go 3 times. And those were perfect powers, so no radical left. This one I would do the same way. You have a fraction under a radical. Just make two radicals. Put the radical with the numerator and put the radical with the denominator. And then simplify those. I think that's easier than one big piece. Fourth root of 81. You might remember that one from our little table. 3. 3 to the fourth is 81. That will be a calculator problem. Uh, this one, uh, just divide 4 into 8, will go 2 times. So a y squared.